Well, I think first of all, we're really excited about the season starting. This is the greatest time of year when you can get back on the ice and uh, and see the enthusiasm with these players and these teams, and and uh, and when the puck drops for real with the start of the regular season, uh, everybody is excited at every level of the of the league, and and, and we're really uh, looking forward to another very competitive season. I think when you look at uh, the races last year within our divisions, they were terrific from a point of point of view from both our players and the fans and and our playoffs were outstanding and we're really looking forward to another very competitive year with some great young prospects and I think that's probably when you look at the Helenka Gretzky Cup and you look at next year's draft and then the, and the quality of prospects in the Western Hockey League I'm not so sure that this is not the greatest crop we've ever produced and that's a pretty large statement when you consider the number of players that have been produced over the years so we're really excited about the prospects coming up and the uh, quality of teams we have throughout the league. Well, I really credit our ownership. Uh, we established a special committee to look at this issue and studied it for quite some time. And at the end of the day, I think that the, the team owners, uh, management felt very strongly this was the right thing to do for the players. Uh, we're always conscious of the uh, demands on players, the travel, and um, making sure that we have a, a good balanced schedule at the same time. So uh, with our divisional play uh, and with the format of 68 games, we're able to uh, come to a uh, position that we think is in the best interest of the players, but at the same time really continues to promote our rivalries within the division. Well, I think first of all, uh, we recognize that the majority of our players are student athletes and they're uh, pursuing their education while playing hockey in the Western Hockey League, so consequently uh, we need to make sure that they have adequate time for, for their studies throughout the course of the season. And then secondly, I think from a development perspective as a player, it's going to allow them more time to focus on skill development and uh, practice time during the week because most of our games will be condensed on the weekends. Well, similar to the decision on the schedule, uh, we're really focused on the player experience first and foremost. And we just felt that if a family uh, and, a, and a young player were committing to the Western Hockey League and at age 15, 16 in particular, that we had an obligation to make sure we were committed to them as well and that the player movement provided that player a signed a standard player agreement in the Western Hockey League. He will be with that organization uh, um, and not have that concern about uh, being uh, moved to another, uh, another WHL franchise. So consequently, uh, we think it's the appropriate thing to do, again, uh, for those players at that age. Well, it's an adjustment, there's no question. Uh, at the same time, I think uh, our management uh, of all of our teams embraced it. Uh, they felt it was, again, the right thing to do and recognized that uh, uh, even though in many cases uh, trades are in the best interest of the player uh, who wishes to move on to another opportunity, um, they felt that uh, it was age appropriate, I guess, to really focus on the older players if there was to be trades made within the league. There have been significant changes, um, um, uh, in particular in the area of discipline with our league. Uh, we brought uh, Kevin Atchison, who was formerly in our officiating department, in to uh, manage the, uh, the uh, uh, player discipline as the director of player safety. Um, we're introducing as well some new standards in that area this year, uh, which we believe are, are uh, necessary to uh, address uh, injuries in the game and make the environment that we're playing in as safe as possible for the players. Um, in addition to that, we added uh, a veteran NHL referee who was a graduate of ours many seasons ago, but uh, spent 20 years in the National Hockey League. Uh, uh, Tom Cowell is joining us as our officiating development coach, and we really feel it's important and this has been embraced by our clubs uh, as well to make sure that our officials are getting uh, as much coaching as possible, not only through our supervisors who do a great job, but also uh, Tommy who will be essentially our head coach uh, leading the uh, video work with our, co with our referees directly and uh, working with them on a one-to-one -one basis throughout the course of the season. Well, I think there's areas of emphasis we focus on every season and it's something that we uh, review with our general managers. Uh, we discuss it obviously with our officiating staff and in this particular season we are looking at uh, I think two things in particular. Uh, repeat offenders uh, that are uh, something I think we've done a very good job on. Uh, uh, players who of course uh, find themselves in that position should understand that they're going to be suspended for their actions and, and it's worked well in, in curbing I guess the uh, uh, the uh, type of illegal hits and in particular in those areas uh, anytime we're talking about head contact uh, we're taking a very vigilant approach and we've increased our standard with respect to length of suspensions uh, for uh, blows to the head and that's something that the officials and uh, our staff and player safety areas have been uh, informed that that's the direction that all of us agree with uh, not only from a league office perspective but uh, more importantly all of our teams agree with that as well.
Well, I think it's extremely important. In fact, quite honestly, it's essential because when you look at the game today and when you're talking about the players themselves and the amount of coaching that they receive from our teams and their coaching staffs and the breakdown of the use of video and, and other analytics within the game today, uh, it's extremely important that our officiating program keep pace with the quality of play on the ice. And, and to do that, we need to make sure that we're working as hard as we possibly can to give the, uh, our officials the support they need to perform on the ice in the same way the players are expected to perform on behalf of their teams. And, and so our philosophy is that we're going to uh, make sure that the resources are there for our officials to, uh, through the work of Tom Cowell as their officiating development coach, Kevin Minchley, our director of officiating, and the entire staff to make sure that we're building the type of video resources and support that they need to be successful on the ice. Well, it's going to be a challenging time. The environment's changing and uh, we conducted a leadership conference this, uh, uh, this past summer in order to discuss this issue with uh, the uh, individuals who are leading the various organizations. Uh, the one reality within our system is that it remains a banned substance under the CHL uh, Drug Education and Anti-Doping Program. Uh, so that policy is very clear for the players that they cannot participate in any use of cannabis and other uh, performance enhancing um, uh, drugs. So consequently uh, it's uh, incumbent on us to make sure we have a, a very effective education program to make sure the players are fully aware of that first of all and to really promote a healthy lifestyle and we've got plans to make sure that the players are uh, fully aware of the uh, restrictions that are, are in that area and in particular the fact that uh, cannabis is a banned substance with all national sport organizations and the Western Hockey League. Well, we're very fortunate. Uh, we've got a great group of, uh, of professionals, education advisors who work directly with our teams. Uh, each of our uh, clubs have a uh, academic uh, education advisor who's assigned to that team and one of the recommendations that was made uh, based on other leagues activities as well was to introduce uh, Grade Slam which is essentially an online 24-7 uh, tutoring service available to the players in addition to the tutoring services available through the team itself and other uh, support they receive from an academic standpoint this will allow them to access the resources they need immediately at any time and certainly when you're traveling and so forth to have that available to you is uh, going to be extremely important to the players. Well first of all we're very proud of the fact that players can play in the Western Hockey League and, uh, and pursue uh, their education in other words not compromising their education while playing at the highest level in the system and uh, that's extremely important to, to families and to the players themselves obviously to put themselves in a position to take advantage of our scholarship program which the Again, team ownership deserve the credit for this. The funding of that program has been in place now for over 25 years. Uh, we're seeing the numbers continue to increase every year with players wanting to access that scholarship, not only to benefit from an academic standpoint in pursuing the post-secondary um, studies of their choice, but to play hockey at a very high level within the youth sports uh, program, and particularly Canada West Hockey. And we're, we're very excited about the fact that uh, the increased rates, over 50% of our graduates now, are taking advantage of the scholarship program. Well, the leadership conference uh, that the Western Hockey League conducted in Edmonton in conjunction with the Alinka Gretzky Cup uh, provided us an opportunity to bring in all of our general managers, head coaches, along with their staffs to um, uh, have a two-day professional development experience and, and that not only provided us with an opportunity to speak to them collectively on a number of league-wide programs in preparation of the start of the season, uh, but more importantly we had a series of guest speakers. Um, we had NHL coaches, NHL general managers, we had experts in the area of working with today's new generation of players uh, to uh, some very innovative uh, physiological uh, uh, and uh, psychological areas in which they could be of help to, the, to our team. So I think it was extremely important uh, anytime you get the opportunity to help our teams and their staffs with respect to uh, professional development and, and coaches seminars and a general manager sessions and the manner that they were uh, that they were conducted I think is going to be extremely helpful to our teams. We believe the alumni in the Western High League is extremely important both at the uh, league and club levels. It's important I think from a number of standpoints one to help mentor our players and to evaluate our player experience and to conduct events which help educate our alumni generally. There's thousands of alumni who want to stay connected with the Western Hockey League and this is going to give them an avenue to do that. They'll support us in many ways. Uh, they're going to be assisting us with respect to uh, communication with former players to make sure the players are aware of what's going on in the league today and how the league has changed and uh, we believe it has changed in a dramatic way 
um, as far as the player experience is concerned. They're going to be very active in assisting us with presentations uh, with our prospects and their parents and helping educate uh, families on the benefits of playing in the Western Hockey League. And then of course there's going to be some, a number of different special events that they wish to conduct uh, which will again serve to connect the alumni, keep the, uh, the players in contact with uh, the league they, they, uh, they played with. And I think many of them have some uh, great experiences to share with us and we're looking forward to that. To be in Saskatchewan is special uh, not only to support the Saskatoon Blades in their efforts in fundraising for the Humboldt uh, community, but to support the uh, Humboldt Broncos on an ongoing basis. And, and we've done that uh, in many ways, and we're going to continue to stay in contact with the Saskatchewan Junior League and, and the Humboldt Broncos to see which way we can, again, continue to assist them. But I think in this particular case, it's extremely important uh, to uh, recognize the fact that our, our teams have been very supportive, not only uh, in Saskatchewan, but throughout the Western Hockey League and contributing in particular through the Broncos Family Assistance Fund, which was initiated through a partnership of the Canadian Hockey League, Hockey Canada and the Saskatchewan Hockey Association, where a significant contribution financially went back to each one of the uh, 29 families impacted by this terrible tragedy. And, uh, so we're going to stay there, the hockey community is very close and we're going to continue to uh, be there when they need us and to make sure that they understand that they've got uh, our full support.